Hello, you're welcome to a new tutorial series, which is SQL Query Optimization. So today we are going to discuss what SQL Query Optimization is and how we can optimize a query on SQL Tower. So one thing that we need to know is what exactly is SQL Query Optimization. Whenever we are talking about SQL Query Optimization, we refer to it as how we can um like an iterative process of enhancing performance of a query which is in terms of the execution time number of bits accesses and many more cost measuring options this is just to know how we can improve the performance of any query that we have so using the sql query optimization you just to find out how we can trace different errors that we have on our queries and how we can improve it to be much more better so it's just like maybe you wrote um, a single query or maybe you have three lines of queries that you want to run on your SQL server. So there's a way you can improve the performance whereby it doesn't take much time to run. And also for the cost measuring options too, you have to look on how it doesn't um, um, take too much cost. That is in terms of spending too much money on it. So now we're going to look into what's, um, how we can, um optimize our queries on the sql server so now we are going to open our ssms that is just to work with all the different queries that we can use as an example on how we can trace all these errors for a different for different queries so we're going to work with this using as microsoft sql server management studio Okay, so what we're going to do now is there's a particular tool that we can use um, on SSMS that is to trace different errors, just like a tool for SQL Server Optimizer. So the tool is, is actually known as um, SQL Server Profiler. So there's something they call SQL Server Profiler. You go under the tools and you click on the SQL Server Profiler. So this is opening. Requires me to put my password. Okay. So with this SQL Server profiler, you can be able to trace any kind of errors or whatsoever that you have in your queries. So when we are done with this, we are still going to move to the execution plan, which is also a way of we um probably we have an uh, a particular query, we can decide to display the execution plan for that particular query so the execution plan is just like um it provides an information on how the query was executed that is it also shows different action that constitute the query so we're going to look into it and see how that is done so whenever we click on the sql server provider after you click on it, it's going to automatically bring out these three properties for us. So what we're going to do is we can see the under the general tab. So let's do, let's put a name, which is testing. Then under the event selection. So we click on the event tab, which is event selection. So let's go to the column filters. So let's click on duration. So this duration is just to tell me the amount of time this is going to take. So it's ten. So if you, whenever you use the SQL Server Provider, you can come down here. Then you can see all these different tabs. You can see this is like pause. We have stop so you can make use of this so this is still running which is going to take some time so let's go back to the um studio so under that provider you can see what i did that is i just went to the um i just went to the provider and then i click on the properties and all so this is still running still running So now, so what we're going to look into next is the execution plan, which I mentioned earlier. And I told us that the execution plan is referred to, is more like the query plan 
and how we can get information on a particular query that we already executed. So, and then one thing about this execution plan is we have three different types of execution plan. Whereby the first one is the estimated execution plan. We also have the actual execution plan. We have the live query statistics. So what we're going to use um, for demo here is we're going to have a particular query that we want to run. So after we run this query, we're going to check the we're going to check the execution plan for that particular query. So now I have a query here which I'm going to use. So I have a particular query here that I'm going to use. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run the execution plan just to see okay the information of this part of this particular query how fast it is and the um time and also what we're going to do now is to select this execution plan because from what we have here just like the way i use this select so so so, so this selecting is just showing me the live statistics which i mentioned earlier that we have the live query statistics which is part of the um three different types of the execution plan so now the query statistics is here so under this you can see under this um, bar you can see this include live query statistics so as i want to change it to an execution plan so this is what i'm going to do i'm going to click on this include um after execution plan what i'm going to do now is i'm going to select i'm going to run the execute so okay it's already run So we're going to click on the execution plan. From what we have here, we can see this select. There's an error here. So you can see this select. You can see the um, hash match, which is the inner join. You can see the table scan. You can see the complete scalar. So you can see how this, you can see this particular arrow. This arrow is just telling us um, how this um, query is being run. You can see the order of query. So you can see this is going from top to bottom. So from what we have here now, for you to see much more information about this particular query, just over your mouse on it. So you can see the different, um, you can see all this physical operation, logical operation, estimated CPU costs and all. So you can see, let me check this select 0%. So you can see this 100%. So all these different percentage is just telling you more information on the query that you ran. So probably you have a particular query now, and then just try to see what exactly is wrong with this query. Why is it taking much time and all? So we can make use of this execution plan, whereby we can um, run it and then try to see what exactly is going on in our query. So now we're going to move to how we can um how we can make changes to all these queries probably just to improve it to run better that is we have much less time rather than something running for a longer period of time so before we move into that we need to look at the purpose of this SQL query optimization so what is the reason just like i mentioned earlier like um, SQL query optimization like the importance so now we're going to look at the purpose of this SQL query optimization so we can pick like three different ones which you have here the first one is to reduce the response time and to reduce the cpu execution time and to improve the throughput so just like i mentioned when i was talking earlier about execution time so now it's just to reduce the response time Whenever you have a query, it doesn't have to run for a longer period of time. So how you can reduce the response time is to try to make changes to your query. Whereby you don't have to use, maybe you are putting select these things, whereby you are supposed to do something else, which is not going to take too much time. So now is the, the main purpose is just to reduce the response time, include throughput, and the execution time. We are going to move to the SQL query optimization techniques. That is um, the different techniques that we can make use of. The first one is the indexing. Index is a data structure that we use to provide quick access to a table based on the search key. So this indexing is just telling us like how you can minimize the disk access to fetch um, data from the database. Probably you want to fetch a little amount of data. So indexing is just like how you can minimize your disk access. 
So that's just what this indexing is all about. So we have different types of indexing that is guidelines on how you can choose different index. So one of these different guidelines is index should not be made on columns that are frequently modified. So this is this guidelines is just telling you how you can improve better when writing your queries and all. So the first thing is index should not be made on columns that are frequently modified. Next one is index should be made on ordering key values. And your index should be made on keys that frequently occur in where clause and joint statements. So when they are telling you that index should be made on keys that frequently occur in where clause and joint statements. So just to tell you that um, index should only be made on such keys. That is, you don't just use the index value anyhow. So and it should ensure like you meet, uh, you make use of it when um, on other key values. So the guidelines for you when you are choosing an index. So we're going to move to the selection part. Just like I mentioned earlier, like you can use selection in different ways. Maybe you are using select instinct or something. So for the selection part, there's a way which we can use select. That is the select statements in um, when running a query. So what we're going to do for the selection is we must do selection of the rows that are required instead of selecting all the rows. So it's just like probably we have a particular table so whereby we want to select a particular rules whereby we don't have to select maybe we have something like a one million rules and you only need maybe probably a thousand of that of that particular data so there's a particular way for which you can select the rules instead of selecting all the old tables so that's what they are trying to tell you that is you do selection of the rules that you require that you need so select so when they are saying select size highly inefficient is it scans the entire database so rather than me doing select star i can do select okay let's say probably i need some columns i can do select maybe name um what line class or something from so it's more like i'm selecting just two of that particular let's say two columns of that particular table so now we're going to move to another part which is the select instinct Select distinct, we must avoid the use of select distinct as it is a costly operation. So the reason why they said select distinct is, is actually because um, select distinct, um, the way it's being used. So people actually, they actually prefer you to use it, maybe you use the main select rather than using the select distinct. Select distinct is a very costly operation whereby it can run for a particular amount of time. So if you try to check the database and everything to look for unique values. So before it brings out the results. So now we also have the inner joins and the where clause. That is inner joins versus where clause. We should use inner joins when merging two or more tables rather than using the where clause. So it's just like when we use, um, maybe we are trying to take a particular column that you said where this is equal to this. So it's better for you to use an inner joint to merge those tables rather than using the where clause. So, and they mentioned the where clause creates the cross join that is, it creates a potential product for merging tables and usually take much time. So, we prefer using the inner join rather than using the where clause all the time. So, using the inner join makes things more simpler than and faster than using the where clause. So, now we're going to move to the limits command. The limit command is usually used to control the number of rows that we want to display. Just like um, what, what, um, what I actually did, probably you can do limit, maybe you want to do a limit 10, you want to do limit 100. So rather than displaying all the old data, so you can use the number of rows that you need, just like what we said earlier. That is, we don't have to display all the old data. So we can use limits to display, maybe you need 100 or 100 rows, you need thousand rows out of a million records. So that's just what the limit command is all about. So now we're going to move back to, uh, okay. So we're going to move back to uh, SSML. So just try to look at this execution plan diagram that we have here. So just like I mentioned earlier, that is, well, um, how we can select this execution plan for us to be able to see what we have here. So you can either go to this toolbar or you can right click on what you have here that is include actual execution 
plan, which is one of the types I mentioned. So you can right click and you can select this or you can come over here. That is, you, you select this include actual execution plan. So whenever you execute, you click on execute, it's going to display this diagram for you, for you to see all these different properties and or whenever you over your mouse. So you can know what is going on in your query. So just like what we have here, you can see all the things that we mentioned earlier, whether we talk about the work clause, um, we talked about the select, we talked about the join. So how we can improve this to be much better is whereby we um, we know what as exactly we want to pick from the data. So that is just another angle from which you can look at it. Probably you need a particular um, set of data. So you know how you can combine your query, whereby you don't need to, um, your query does not have to run for a longer time whenever you click on the execute button. So just look on how you can improve your queries and all. So that's what is SQL's, um, how you can optimize your SQL queries. So I guess we have an idea on how you can optimize our SQL queries from what we've done here and what we've explained. So I'll be looking forward to seeing you more on this, um, on this channel. So thanks for coming. This is the end of the tutorial. I would love to see you next time.